COE prices on the rise and hitting record highs every other day, the cost of owning a car in Singapore has become incredibly expensive. In fact, Singapore is well known to be the most expensive country to own a car. Not only that, ride-hailing prices have been increasing too, with it going up by as much as 50% due to the rising cost of petrol and higher demand for such services. So the question is, will it be cheaper to actually get your own car or does ride-hailing still remain as the cheaper alternative? In this video, we'll be comparing the cost between the two and see which is the cheaper option. But before that, do join my Telegram group to discuss or ask any questions that you may have. Alright, let's first start by looking at the cost of owning a car, which we all know is not going to be cheap. In general, there are 8 types of costs to consider when buying a car, namely down payment, car loan, petrol, car insurance, parking, ERP, road tax and servicing. For this example, let's just assume that we want to save as much money as possible. So we'll use the cheapest car model in the market now, the Peroda Beza 1.3 Premium X Automatic Transmission, which currently costs $129,000 after factoring in all the additional costs. Immediately, the first cost that will pay you when purchasing a car is the down payment itself. Depending on the open market value of the vehicle, you will need to put a down payment of 30% to 40% of the cost. In this case, the down payment is 30%, which works out to be $38,700. This leaves the remaining 70% to be paid via loan. MAS also caps the maximum car loan period to up to 7 years. Assuming the current car loan interest rate of 2.78%, the money installment will work out to be $1,284. Next, petrol would be another one of your biggest recurring costs for owning a car. For the Peroda Beza, it can go as fast as 21 km for every liter of petrol. Assuming you live in the West and work in CBD with the distance traveled per day about 50 km, this means you would have traveled 1,500 km per month, which uses about 72 liters of petrol. The cheapest petrol right now is about $2.86 per liter which means the total petrol cost would come out to be about $206 per month. But of course, you can save money on petrol by using credit cards to enjoy petrol perks and discounts of up to 20%. Next, while parking fees may not seem like a lot, it can actually be quite expensive when they all add up. Given that about 77% of us stay in HDB, we will use the residential HDB season parking as a guide, which costs $110 per month. On top of that, if you are working in the CBD, the monthly season parking would cost around $200. Then there are also extra parking costs if you take your family and friends to go out to Gai Gai. Parking fees will vary depending on the place you go. But let's just assume an additional $80 per month for shopping centers and coupon type parking. Putting all this together, uh, parking will cost about $390 per month. Then with ERP charges varying anywhere between $0.50 cents to $6, this is another cost that may seem little but can add up to a big amount. Assuming that you have to pass through the ERP gantry during your daily transport to work and weekend trips to town, you could be paying $80 or more on ERP every month based on an average charge of $2.50 to $3 per day. Though, the good thing is that ERP charges can be avoided if you plan your routes carefully. Next, there is car insurance which you will be thankful for if you ever get into an accident. Touchwood, yeah? Just in case you're wondering, no? Even if you are a super safe driver, it's not possible to avoid paying for car insurance. Under the Motor Vehicles Third Party Risk and Compensation Act, it is a requirement for all vehicles on the roads to have a third party insurance coverage. Car insurance premiums could vary based on different factors such as age, the coverage you want, the car you own, and your driving history. For example, younger drivers are generally subjected to higher car insurance premiums because they are perceived to be less experienced at driving. The same also applies for those with a not so good driving history. In this case, we will assume a monthly car insurance of $150, which is about the market rate today. On top of that, before you can use the roads, you will also need to pay for the road tax, which will come up to $584 per year, or $48.67 per month for the Peroda Beza. Next, sending your car for regular servicing is important, as there's bound to be wear and tear even if you take very good care of your car. Car owners are recommended to send their car for servicing once every 6 months to keep their car in good condition 
and to prevent more expensive repairs down the road. The average cost per service every six months is a good $250, which breaks down to be $41.67 per month. There are also other miscellaneous costs such as car washing and fines, but we will just exclude them from our calculation. So how much will you be spending on your car every month? For the Peroda Beza, the total cost will add up to around $2,200.34 per month. This is on top of the $38,700 down payment, which you have to pay in cold hard cash. When you put everything together over a 10-year period, the total cost will come out to $256,516.80. Though, this is not the final amount yet because there's also something known as the scrap value where if you decide to sell your car after 10 years, you can actually get back a bit a bit of money. In this case, we will assume the scrap value to be $5,500 based on 50% of the additional registration fee. So the total cost will come down to about $251,000. At this amount, you will almost be able to afford a 3-room HDB flat layout. Jose bro. Quick pause. Did you know that besides Weibo Awesome Sign Up Rewards, it also, it also has one of the most competitive pricing on the market? For example, for the US market, they are only charging 0.025% of the trade amount plus a very low minimum of just 50 cents. Same for the Hong Kong market and the China market, where they are charging a super low 0.02% to 0.03% with a minimum of $12. And if you are an US options trader, you'll be glad to know that Weibo is just charging $0.55 cents per contract with no minimum. Weibo also offers really good conversion rates whenever you want to convert your currency. And last but not least, Weibo doesn't charge any platform fee, no maintenance fee, none of that nonsense. All of which lets you save more money when trading with Weibo. Also, if you sign up to Weibo using my link down below, find any amount and keep the money there for 30 days, you will get to win 10 free shares worth up to 5,000 US dollars in total. Besides that, there's also a money boot promotion where you can earn up to 3,000 US dollars by funding more. Additionally, if you are looking for a great alternative, Weibo recently launched their very first transfer deal, which you can find in the app promotion center once you have signed up with my link. So if you are interested in trying out Weibo, do sign up to them using my link down below. With that being said, let's get back to the video. So that was the cost of owning a car, but how does that compare to ride hailing every day instead? Let's do some calculations to find out. Currently, there are nine licensed ride hail service providers in Singapore, with the more common ones being Grab, Gojek, Ride, and Tada. But for this example, we will be using Grab since it's the most popular ride hailing app in Singapore with 74% of users using it. So let's consider a family with children who are going to school. This would mean that a typical day of grabbing around would include a round trip from home to school, then to work and back to school, then home. This comes out to be an average of two trips on a weekday or 44 trips a month. I tried collecting some data over the past week and found out that on some days, a trip may cost $30 on others, it may cost $40, but the average round trip would be around $42. Let's also assume that every weekend, you will go to the market and town once. This would mean a total of 16 trips to and fro town and market every month. And based on the data that I collected, the average cost of a trip to town is about $29 and to the market is about $10. This would translate to a monthly cost of $2,160. Over 10 years, this will come out to around $259,200, which is actually slightly more expensive as compared to the cost of owning a car of about $251,000. However, do note that these calculations are based on the cheapest brand new car in the market today. The cost of owning a car may be lower or higher depending on the type of car and whether it is a brand new car or second-hand car. It also depends how frequently you use ride hailing services. If you are going to use Grab for all your transport needs, then based on my calculation, you may be better off getting a car. Besides that, it's also worth noting that financial costs are not the only considerations here. Some of the more common reasons for owning a car include fetching kids to and fro school, ferrying elder family members with mobility issues, and working in Ulu areas that barely have any public transport. Owning a car provides you with more flexibility 
as you can use it as much as you like and whenever you want. This may also be useful, especially if your job requires you to constantly move around. For example, insurance agents and property agents. For ride hailing, while it is available 24-7, you may not always get a car, especially during peak periods or festive seasons. And even if you can get a ride, the cost will be much, much higher during these periods. Also, there may be restrictions for certain rides, such as no gearers allowed and no pets allowed. In short, before buying a car, you should ask yourself whether it is a need or a want. It is also important to ask yourself whether you are willing and able to spend more than 200k over 10 years for a car. Unless you really need a car, personally, I feel that owning one may not be necessary given that public transport system in Singapore is just as good and is consistently ranked one of the best in the world. And that means you can still lead a comfortable lifestyle even without owning a car. Anyway, that's all for this video. Hopefully, you found it useful. Like, share, and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.